Welcome to Women at Halftime podcast, but not just for women, for you men too. If you're at mid-career or the halftime of life, our inspirational topics are not only fun, but also meant to help you maximize and write your next chapter. Right here with me, Deborah Johnson. Well, hello, uh, Deborah Johnson here with you today with our Women at Halftime podcast. And what a great subject I have for you today as we are embracing a new year. And it's all about embracing change in the new year. And uh, it's a great subject to talk about, especially right at this time and kind of a renewal time and all of that. And uh, we'll talk about some things that are most important for that. Make sure that you're getting the article that comes with this, goalsforyourlife.com forward slash newsletter. And you can get our updates there with that art- with those articles uh, for our newsletter. And also Hero Mountain Summit. You can get there with heromountainsummit.com. It is a, uh, a course that I only open up for individuals twice a year at this point. So uh, that is right now you can uh, get signed up. It's a wonderful, wonderful course taking you through five months that will help you make those changes personally and professionally. So that's a that's a great one for you to uh, at least consider. You can always start free, kind of check it out. So let's kind of dive in to some of that. Embracing change in the new year. Well, the new year, it offers a prime opportunity for embracing change due to its inherent symbolism of like fresh beginnings and renewed energy. But change can be hard. We all know that. As the calendar recess for a new year, it signifies really a chance for us to mentally reset and setting new goals and intentions And as we celebrate a new year, there's a certain amount of motivation and optimism as we reflect on our lives and imagine new beginnings, if we take the time to do that. Now, some look to make changes physically by getting in shape. We see that from gym memberships. Some want to make a change in their work. And some want to make make change in their financial outlook or location. And no matter what change, it takes a certain mindset of determination, tenacity, and optimism to create positive transformations. Resolutions alone fail. We've seen the statistics. Nine to 12% of people keep New Year's resolutions for, or at least are confident of their success. That is a very low rate, nine to 12%. However, this is a time to create a supportive environment for encouragement and accountability for ourselves and others around us. It's a good time to do that. So I'll give you a couple examples of successful practices for embracing change of people maybe you've been familiar with. In 1983, Tony Robbins, now considered as the world's number one success coach, he set aside time to establish a whole new set of goals writing down all the things he would no longer settle for, as well as what is, uh, uh, as well as what he was committed to having in his life. And that moment, by him writing down those things, it changed his life. Scott Adams, he's the creator of the Dilbert comic and is one of the most successful cartoonists of our time. And before he launched his cartoon career, he was just a normal nine to five employee but he made a transform a transformational change. He started writing down, I love this, a positive affirmation 15 times a day. And time and time again, that affirmation, it was fulfilled as he focused so intently on it. So, so those are some great inspiring examples. And there are many more with a simple Google search that you can do on your own. But here we're going to focus on five mindsets that can aid us in making our own transformative changes in the new year. So make sure you get the free download that comes with this to make notes for embracing change in your life. Number one, openness to learning. For a transformative change, embrace a mindset of continuous learning and growth. And personal and professional growth is usually kind of down on the list of goals for a new year for most people. But 
But taking the step forward with a course or a coaching session, it can make all the difference in making successful changes. And it's really never too late to start. There are so many online courses to be had. So look carefully at who and what organization created that course, first of all, to be able to best determine the direction and focus of the outcome. I really urge you in doing that. Now, of course, I've already mentioned Hero Mountain Summit, and it's a course that can truly bring transformation personally and professionally with very, very small steps for success. I put it together purposefully that way. To incorporate an openness to learning, it takes a mindset of receptiveness to new ideas, knowledge, and experiences. And this mindset, it allows for that, the, that acquisition of new skills, perspectives, and approaches that can facilitate personal and professional development. Well, that's a mindset that I encourage everyone to develop. Keep thirsty. Stay thirsty. Two, resilience and adaptability. Adaptability, can I even say that word? We can cultivate resilience by acknowledging that setbacks and challenges are a part of the change process for us. And failure is a part of growth and change. Though we often discount the role that failure plays in the progress, it, it, it doesn't feel good. Stopping to evaluate what went wrong and what went right will, will help us learn the most. Now, Peter Drucker, he lived from 1909 to 2005, and he's known as the father of modern management, and he wrote many books on the subject. And he famously said, you've heard it, what gets measured gets managed. Well, this principle continues to hold value for many areas of our life. So to increase resilience, it's helpful to develop the ability to adapt to unforeseen circumstances and setbacks, though that's far from easy. So viewing obstacles, write them down, view those obstacles as opportunities for growth rather than roadblocks. And that can empower us to adapt and overcome those difficulties, especially as many times they arise again and again. Three, positive self-talk and affirmation. With all of today's messaging about confidence, imposter syndrome, and negative self-talk, well, it's important for us to adopt a positive and empowering inner dialogue. And it's really imperative to find, to find ways to encourage ourselves with affirmations and positive self-talk to build our confidence and self-belief in what we are attempting and of our own worth. Now, this practice can take the form of positive affirmations, similar to what Scott Adams did with his 15 positive affirmations every day. And as each affirmation came true, he just added another affirmation to focus on. That's a great little practice. I might adopt that this year. Affirming our capabilities and worth can bolster our motivation and determination to achieve our goals. And this also takes a mindset of setting aside limiting beliefs, as modeled by Tony Robbins as he wrote down what he would no longer settle for. That is a great principle. Four, mindfulness and presence. And I'm going to review all of these at the end, so just to make sure you get them and the free download that comes with this. An extremely valuable habit is to practice mindfulness by focusing on the present moment, which I encourage by journaling and even meditation. Now, I take time for this most every single morning, and it makes a difference in my day. And this, this mind, mindset of mindfulness, it encourages awareness of thoughts, emotions, and actions without judgment. And you don't have to write much, just a little. And it also helps to evaluate where you are and where you want to be. And if you've not updated your core values recently, this is a good time to do so. I will put a link in the article for core values. Make sure you do that. I've also written about it in the book, Stop Circling. There are many journals that can be obtained online, but all it really takes is a simple notepad. Now, I'm a believer in the value of pen and paper. Many times, if thoughts are written out, well, they become clearer, especially as we reread them. 
and it helps to write them out to be present in the moment for making conscious choices aligned with our goals and values. It really helps me to do that. Hopefully it will help you too. And number five, goal-oriented mindset. Wow. Well, it's important to not only set clear goals, but achievable and measurable goals with realistic expectations. Now, I distinctly remember the unrealistic goal that I had during one college spring break when I thought I'd take up the violin. After all, I had accompanied my sister for years, so it couldn't be all that hard, right? However, I did not take into the account that she had started studying violin at the age of four, and, and it's one of the hardest instruments to play. I was taking my instrument classes, but I should have never <laughs> attempted that. The two weeks of my break went by so quickly, and I hardly picked up the instrument. I therefore decided to continue my realistic expectations and goals, pursuing piano, voice, and completing my education, which I was very successful at. To successfully achieve goals, create actionable plans to attain them. Now, we have a free downloadable goal worksheet, in fact, several, to make sure that you get that. I will put the link there. So make sure you get those and break down larger objectives into smaller, manageable steps. And then you celebrate your wins. This mindset, it fosters a sense of direction and purpose, keeping us motivated and accountable for our own progress. Now, how do we apply this? Let me give you some clues. <laughs> These five mindsets, they can contribute significantly to a successful and transformative journey in the new year. So take time to write a brief application for each of those mindsets that you'll apply. And this will facilitate the most, most personal growth and achievement. And as a result, the great satisfaction of success. So here they are. Number one, openness to learning. Number two, resilience and adaptability. Number three, positive self-talk and affirmation. Four, mindfulness and presence. Five, goal-oriented mindsets. Those are all mindsets. I have a brief little download that you can write your little comment, maybe a one sentence, and how you will be open to learning. And the second one, how you will develop resilience and adaptability. Number three, what sort of self-talk, maybe an affirmation you can start on. Number four, on mindfulness and presence, maybe that you're going to continue journaling, maybe in a different way, or maybe you're starting to journal. And number five, and set maybe a new goal, maybe a different one that maybe it'll be a little bit harder for you, a little easier, a little more achievable this year. So I hope that's helped you in um, this uh, openness to change and, and being able to uh, make those changes. It's a good time of year to go through all of, the, all of the steps that we have just talked about. I spend time at the end of the year. I spend the time usually at the end of every quarter to kind of evaluating, but especially at the end of the year and the beginning of year to really evaluate a lot of areas of my life and of my business and to kind of see where I want to go. I've, I've made some big changes that have really made a big difference for me in uh, how I schedule my time, uh, what I am doing in my business, how I'm putting things together more online, uh, doing a little less travel for business and doing more travel with my husband. Uh, I've got not only children, grown children now, but grandchildren. I want to spend time with them. So all of that is within my goals. I want to keep working. I love my work. And I want to be able to increase the the just the effect that I can have on, on helping others move forward with their lives. So that's all within my goals and, and how what I am doing to measure in different areas. And in fact, make sure that we we get measured, we measure everything. What gets measured gets managed. That's a great principle. I always have to remind myself of that as well. So thank you so, so much for joining me today on this Women in Halftime podcast. Again, make sure you check out heromountainsummit.com. Uh, share the, um, these links with everyone uh, that you know. Uh, Women at halftime.com is where our, our podcast lies there as well as getting onto our weekly uh, updates 
we don't spam you. We just send you the updates. And um, I think you will really enjoy those, getting those directly to your inbox. So thank you again for joining me. And I will look forward to being with you again next time. So bye-bye for now. Thank you for joining us. It is because of our wonderful listeners like you that we keep going strong week after week. We'd love it if you'd share and follow us to not miss a single show and even write a review. You can also find all of our articles, products, and links at womenathalftime.com.